Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of the right? I did my best, sir. We all did. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Daltons got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. Story was Bob Dalton's girl was always riding him about how he had no ambition. Oh, you're nobody next to Jesse James, she'd say. Finally, the bastard took his brothers to Cofferville just to shut her up. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Their first mistake was pulling a job in their own damn hometown. Brothers paid dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the Daltons for months, now they finally had them dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. They'll give up eventually. We just gotta wait for some bitches out. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. So he went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. He saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. from above. Fortunately, a water tower was right there. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. It was brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. Heroic men like him, who did what other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Like Jim Bowie and Davy Crockett, who died defending the Alamo. Is that Silas Green? Son of a bitch!
reads. What the hell? Blam, blam. He came away victorious, taking down those thieving Daltons. His name is Silas Greaves. And when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. It was early evening, not high noon. I was late to the party and Coffeeville was already up in arms. The Daltons blew up a safe and were all set to hightail it out of there. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies. I had been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something reckless. And finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends in Coffeeville. Waste your bullets. Go ahead. Oh, now, Those friends came after me like a pack of wild dogs. Tooth and nail. They were coming at me from all directions. I caught sight of the Daltons running with the money and didn't want to lose them. Problem was, they knew the town better than I did. And to top it off, I found myself in the middle of another shootout entirely. Did the Daltons hole up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They were cousins of the Daltons. And they were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Daltons. Which wasn't any surprise, because those two families have been feuding forever. And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smiths, pissing off the Heimhoffers, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Well, bullets were flying every which way as all the old feuds in Kansas caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in Coffeeville that day. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. The Dalton boys knew I would never give up. Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. They set a trap to slow me down and allow at least two of them to escape. The third brother stayed behind to plant me, just in case that trap of theirs didn't work. It was Emmett, the youngest, and he decided to stand his ground and face me down. I ain't afraid of you, Silas Greaves. This is where it is for you. He was determined to protect his brothers. And I understood how he felt. Taking me on all by his lonesome wasn't exactly a recipe for a long life. But Emma Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? But I have to admit, that boy had grit. Get those suckers! 
It took me a couple of days to track the Daltons down. They can't get away with this! And in that time, a whole posse of local vigilantes offered to lend a hand. We'll track them to the ends of the earth. They seemed as determined as me to find those outlaws. But as we headed into those swamps, it was like I had my own private army. There was no way those boys were getting away this time. It was early fall, right? Beautiful time of year. At least you had the weather on your side. Not by my recollection. It was damp and foggy as hell. It was tough to stay on a true course, so we kept an eye out for landmarks. It was autumn. The maple trees were in full color, red as blood. The rains that year were torrential, so the whole area was flooded. The vigilantes had spread out wide, and pretty soon I couldn't see anybody. Bury them in the swamp! Put them where they stand! Except for some some bitches ahead of me wanting to do me harm. So I had to face him alone. I wondered why my compatriots didn't come running when they heard the shots. So did you find the Daltons? Not yet. But I did have the questionable pleasure of meeting a few of their friends. The boys had established quite a reputation by that time, so they attracted all manner of riffraff to their cause. Point B and I was under serious attack. And my reinforcements was nowhere to be seen. Luckily, a barn materialized as if right before my eyes. I scrambled up top to get a better view, but just ended up falling inside. So, how did you get out? The barn doors was open. About right then, I saw some suspicious characters running through the bushes. Of course, I followed them. But that goddamn swamp was like a goddamn maze, and pretty soon I had no goddamn idea where I was. Steve? 
So I just started walking, and pretty soon I... Oh. Steve. Steve. Uh, huh? Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm listening. Indians surrounded me from all sides. Indians? There were Indians. No. I just wanted to make sure Steve was paying attention. Now, where was I? You were following the Daltons through a swamp? That's right. See, Steve? Dwight's paying attention. No, I I'm listening. I, I, I was just uh, resting my eyes. So, where was I? The Daltons. Right. See, there's a reason so many outlaw gangs are made up of brothers. Being a brother is a very sacred thing. It's a bond like no other. So did you ever find the damn Daltons? Not yet, but I did find a few of their cousins. You Kansans breed like rabbits. More Smiths or Heimhoffers or who knows what. But hell, what's more important than family? I bet Ben knows what I'm talking about. Those Dalton boys were out there somewhere, standing together against anyone who would threaten them. That's when I saw it. A goddamn steamboat. A steamboat? In a swamp? Yeah, Steve, but this wasn't much more than a wreck, really. But how'd a damn steamboat end up in the swamps? Yes, it floated off during the flood of 89. Now, was it a stern wheeler or, or a side wheeler? What, what? Does that really make a difference, Steve? It was a steamboat with a goddamn army on board. It was then that a fusillade of bullets come a raining down from on high, and those vigilantes who accompanied me weren't anywhere to be found. But among those men that were shooting at me, I thought I saw some familiar faces.
Somewhere up there, the Daltons were waiting on me. Sounds like you don't give up too easy. That's the kind of man I am, Ben. I set out to do something. I do it. Surrender just ain't in my nature. Plus, I'm stubborn as hell. Right about then, much to my relief, the vigilantes finally arrived. Their leader motioned at a cabin in the middle of the top deck, pointing me directly at the Daltons. I finally had them, after months of dogged pursuit. But it turned out that they had me. Take him out! I'm sending you to hell! The Daltons had played me like a fiddle. Apparently, the vigilantes were on their damn payroll. They didn't just want to shoot me. They wanted to burn me alive. But finding my way out of a burning labyrinth proved to be quite a challenge. It was a riverboat, right? I mean, it's not like it was a goddamn ocean liner. Well, yeah, but I was in Did a fight. Did you hear about that ship that's gonna launch next year? Largest one in the world. Um, You're well, talking I'm... about the Titanic. If you ask me, it's too blessed big. I don't think it'll even flow. So anyway... Don't be stupid, Steve. They know what they're doing. They say that the Titanic is unsinkable. Oh, God. But getting back to that steamboat, how'd you get off it, Mr. Grease? I took in a lot of smoke that day, so I admit my recollection might be a bit hazy. But somehow, I managed to finally disembark. I was coughing up smoke and pretty damn pissed. I was done playing games with those boys. It was time to settle this once and for all. weren't about to come at me one at a time. They were in this together. Two brothers side by side determined to take me down. Confident that this time the odds were on their side. They got it wrong. A sad end for those two. If they'd only known that Emmett was still alive despite his wounds. Paroled 14 years later, he moved to California and sold real estate and lived off the legend of that fateful day. And the tragic death of his two brothers.